If Crohn's disease is reversible, why aren't more doctors talking about it? In this video, it's all about debunking myths surrounding Crohn's disease care and recovery. We're gonna talk about the top four reasons why Crohn's disease patients don't seem to get the help that they need to reverse Crohn's disease symptoms for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Chan Udasri, a board-certified surgeon specializing in reversing Crohn's inflammation, which is caused by gut microbiome dysfunction. In the past 13 years, I've had thousands of success stories of patients and clients who were able to rid themselves of inflammation for good. And we have people around the world in every time zone who've utilized the knowledge and protocols provided by our coaching program and the clinic to maximize results and reverse Crohn's disease inflammation for good. In this video, we will be discussing very, very important information that is usually left out of doctors' discussions regarding Crohn's disease. And we will also dive into the top four reasons why this knowledge is not widely known. Number one, doctors still blame genetics. This problem I call the knowledge gap. There are hundreds of studies out there that show that gut microbiome dysfunction is the real trigger for inflammation seen in a variety of autoimmune conditions, and Crohn's disease is no exception. Here's a 2021 study that highlights the potential of targeting specific aspects of the gut microbiota as a treatment approach for Crohn's disease, restoring gut health rather than only managing just the symptoms. And here is a 2021 study that describes how bacterial imbalances contributes to Crohn's disease progression and affirms that targeted dietary strategies hold promise for more effective personalized treatments. There are also studies that show diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise play an outsized role in regulating inflammation from Crohn's disease. Here's a 2021 review paper analyzing dietary interventions in Crohn's disease, concluding that its management requires a multifaceted approach integrating personalized nutrition and gut microbiome modulation. And here's a 2020 study discussing the impacts of lifestyle factors on Crohn's disease, emphasizing that exercise may reduce flares and fatigue, while obesity, stress, and poor sleep can exacerbate symptoms. But for some reason, there is this pervasive attitude like genetics dictate the outcomes in Crohn's disease. Like it's the only thing that matters to gastroenterologists. But most people who get Crohn's disease have had the same genes before when they were healthy and didn't have Crohn's disease. So what gives? So let me point out some things. There are many genes associated with Crohn's disease, but the reality is bacterial genomics play an ever more important role. I actually teach my clients about this topic. Take a look at this preview from our membership only course. Even though there are dozens of human genes, recall that I said that these genes could be turned on and off depending on how you behave and respond to triggers. And what are these environmental triggers? These environmental triggers are diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise, the big five. The typical story we hear from most doctors is that genetics cause inflammation, but let me add to this story. Every cell in the body has a nucleus, which contains DNA. This DNA provides the recipe book for various functions in the body, including inflammation. So the genes are the recipe book of sorts. And if you take this recipe book to, let's say, a bakery, they make scones. If you take it to a cafe, they may make soup. So the same recipe book in different parts of the body provides the instructions for different things. So external influences greatly impact what gene recipes are being used in each cell. So this leads to two very important points. One, just because you have a gene, it doesn't mean it's always turned on. In fact, it can remain off until the right time. Second, not every cell in the body uses every gene. The important takeaway here is that whether or not you have quote unquote good genes or bad genes that cause inflammation, they're not always on. You have the ability to control them. But what you need to learn is how. And that's where many doctors fall short. They don't tell you how. They're so quick to blame genetics and prescribe medication that they don't think for a second that perhaps there's a way to control whether a gene is turned on or off. And that's precisely what we're gonna teach in this course. Okay, now would be a good time to mention, so far we've been talking about human genes, and that can be turned on and off. But remember that our body is also host to billions of microbes. These microbes harbor their own sets of DNA, which can cause inflammatory metabolites. 
Some of these microbes help us, but some of them harm us. And the correct balance is what we seek. Believe it or not, if we take the sum total of all the genes in our body, only 1% is actually human. The other 99% come from bacteria and other microbes, mostly living in our intestines and airways. For the people that like to blame genetics, you may not even have terrible genetics. Your genetics may be just fine. You may just have a bacterial imbalance, and that's what's causing a significant problem. Again, this is another thing that most doctors don't talk about. And here, you have ever-changing ratio of good versus bad bacteria. So let me give you a few examples. We've seen this with depression. We've seen it with obesity. We've seen this with IBS. We see it with inflammatory bowel disease and other autoimmune conditions such as lupus, rheumatoid, MS, psoriasis, eczema, and chronic allergies. In each of these conditions, bad bacteria plays a significant role. So you have to get rid of them and replace them with good bacteria. So in the case of Crohn's disease specifically, it's very important to address the root causes of inflammation. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. Doctors don't even know which imbalances are relevant. I'm gonna make this pretty simple. Microbiome imbalances cause inflammation. We know this because 80% of the immune system is in the gut and there are trillions of bacteria, viruses, funguses, and immune cells all interacting to produce inflammation. But here's the problem. Doctors don't fix the microbiome. At least currently, doctors fall into a couple different categories. There are ones that don't even think the microbiome even plays a role in Crohn's disease inflammation. There are GI doctors that know the microbiome plays a role, but don't know what types of imbalances are actually relevant. And then there are ones that sometimes test for imbalances, but cannot predict cause and effect. So therefore they use generic probiotics to fix them and then there are ones like me who have studied the plasmid level DNA characteristics and phenotypic responses of individual subspecies of bacteria and carefully chose ones that actually move the needle on Crohn's disease inflammation. The gut microbiome recalibration needs to be precise and evidence-based, not random and haphazard. It also needs to take into account individual subspecies within a group of bacteria that actually have the genetic plasmids to solve inflammation. Just because a gut microbiome test, say you have dysbiosis or overgrowth or leaky gut, doesn't mean you just blindly replace the strains that are low. And in fact, that strategy never works. And I get people calling me all the time asking me how to fix these imbalances the right way. Second point, they don't know about the healing power of phytonutrients for Crohn's disease. What are phytonutrients and why are they important? Phytonutrients are molecular compounds found mainly in plants and fungi that have a strong positive effect on human health. These include superfoods, micronutrients, and antioxidants. When we design a phytonutrient-rich diet for our Crohn's disease clients, we carefully take into account their individual nutrition needs as well as other medical conditions which may be positively or negatively affected by herbal medicines and natural supplements. Just because someone talks about something online doesn't mean that it actually works or is beneficial. We prefer to try to limit the use of ineffective supplements and try to get all of the superfoods and essential micronutrients through just the diet. Now, when I say micronutrients, I'm talking about vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients. There are also individual considerations that need to be made for macronutrients as well, which are carbs, fats, and proteins. The correct ratios each day will fix a variety of metabolic issues associated with Crohn's disease healing and inflammation. If you get these items wrong, you'll not see healing. So it's important to carefully consider these variables. I have an entire video already out about the ideal diet for Crohn's disease, so be sure to browse through the channel and check that out. Number three, and this is an important one, doctors don't have the time needed to successfully coach patients. How many of you have been to a doctor and you get there and the doctor is in and out in 15 minutes and only talks about ordering tests, medications, and consultations. Where's the discussion about diet, digestion, sleep, stress, exercise, trauma, supplements, lifestyle changes? There's none of that. In our clinic's coaching program, it's entirely different. In fact, the average number of communications we have with our coaching clients in the first several weeks of the program is 200 to 300 communications per week, and that's for each person. Obviously what I'm describing is an entirely different level of commitment that you'll never see at your doctor's office. We track everything, symptoms, food, sleep, 
weight, exercise, and even bowel movements and poop every single day. And that's what it takes to figure out how to solve Crohn's disease because with Crohn's disease, you need to pay attention to every important detail and these everyday things matter. And the last thing you wanna do is miss something major that's holding you back from Crohn's disease recovery. The medical community as a whole doesn't do this, but they should. The reason is they don't have time. Their practices aren't set up that way. You see them for 15 minutes, then get ordered some tests and some prescriptions and that's it. They see you back in three to six months. And unfortunately, this is why people with Crohn's disease don't get better and why most doctors think it's not possible to reverse Crohn's disease inflammation when in fact you can. Number four, over-reliance on medications and the underappreciation of side effects and alternatives. Most of the knowledge that doctors learn in medical school and residency come from research trials. And unfortunately, these randomized controlled trials, which are the gold standard for Crohn's disease, cost millions of dollars to conduct. Because they're so expensive, the main entities that fund these large research trials for Crohn's disease are pharmaceutical drug companies. And the reason is they've got skin in the game. They have a financial incentive when they show that a Crohn's disease drug works because they can then take it to market and advertise it to consumers and doctors. And in the United States, they have patent protection and exclusive rights on the Crohn's disease drug for the first several years. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm totally anti-pharmaceuticals. I'm not. And pharmaceuticals play a very important role in our current healthcare landscape for Crohn's disease treatment. So please don't misinterpret my comments. What I'm saying is very specific about how knowledge about disease treatments are conveyed and communicated to doctors and patients. So what ends up happening is that whatever clinical trials are funded and show a successful result, these therapies end up getting all of the attention. And unfortunately, there's no spotlight or clinical trials for home remedies, natural cures, over-the-counter probiotics, or herbal supplements. So these solutions end up being totally ignored. When's the last time you saw a commercial for broccoli? Some states and jurisdictions also restrict the ability of doctors like me to talk about these solutions because there's such limited evidence. And unfortunately, I've even seen some of my colleagues get labeled as misinformation for discussing alternative modalities. I do think there's a fine line here because obviously protecting consumers and vulnerable patients should be a priority for regulatory agencies. You never want some unscrupulous person to take advantage of somebody by selling them snake oil or some quick fix. But I think the effort to curb misinformation has sometimes led to censorship of legitimate discussion within the medical community. And that's no one's fault. I think everybody is trying to do their best thing here but it's very hard to change a mindset that's so embedded in medical culture, and that's that medication for Crohn's disease is the best long-term solution. So take it for what it's worth, I'm a Western-trained surgeon. Obviously, I've used medication and surgery to fix patients, but I also wanna say that there are other, more effective modalities for reversing Crohn's disease that are totally underappreciated and underutilized by our profession. I know many of you are frustrated by the limited knowledge base or communications with your doctors about the types of solutions for Crohn's disease that actually work, but I'm also here to tell you that there are ways to engage with practitioners and health coaches that actually know what they're doing. And I try to be really helpful on these calls to figure out what types of solutions may work out well. So if you or someone you know has Crohn's disease and is struggling to find the right course of treatment or the right information, share with them this video. It might help them get the relief that they're seeking. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.